Welcome to the first in a new monthly video series where I try to hold myself accountable for the things I read. Which kind of sounds depressingly masochistic, but I can't be trusted. <laughs> So I typically read about 15 books a month, give or take. So to give myself some wiggle room, I've got a stack of 10 books here that I hope to read in September. And as I put this stack down next to me, I remembered that I wanted to pop out to my local bookshop today to get the new Claire Keegan novel. So this is already kind of half out the window, but I'm gonna do my best. Every time I do this, it's probably going to include a few review copies that I've been given, and I'll start with those this month. This is Dragon Palace by Hiromi Kawakami. It was translated from the Japanese into English by Ted Goosen, and I can't wait to read it. It's a collection of eight stories, and I have a long personal history with Hiromi Kawakami. Her novel, Strange Weather in Tokyo was the first Japanese novel I ever read in translation. Reading that book, like, eight years ago, began my journey into an obsession with literature in translation, especially that from Japan, Korea, and China. Without her books, Books and Bao wouldn't exist. So I am particularly excited for Dragon Palace. I'm gonna be reviewing it, I will put up a review video, and I can't wait. Here's something very, very exciting. This is Peach Pit an anthology collection. This is a brand new collection of stories coming out in September, edited by Molly Llewellyn and Crystal Buckley. Molly Llewellyn is an internet friend of mine. She and I have been Instagram friends for a long, long time, and she has been working on Peach Pit forever, and it's finally here. This is a collection of 16 stories by 16 feminist authors, with a kind of theme of being dangerous, being terrible, being daring. These are unsavory women. And the authors in here include some of my favorites like Lauren Groff, Kaming Chang, Aaliyah Whiteley, Alison Rumfit, and a bunch more. This is an amazing collection. I cannot wait to tear through it and do a proper review of it. Here's something pretty cool. The Night House by Joe Nesbo. Joe Nesbo is the king of Norwegian crime thrillers. Everybody knows his name. Everybody has read his books. His crime books are the stuff of legend at this point, but this is his first horror novel. I am so excited to read this because he's such a legendary author and I'm such a mad fan of horror. This is gonna be amazing. It was translated from the Norwegian by Neil Smith, and I was sent this copy in a beautiful box. I put it all on Instagram. I felt particularly lucky to get something like this. This is pretty unique. I often get sent books in translation. Publishers know how much I love Japanese and Korean and Latin American fiction, but to be sent this? I felt really lucky, and I can't wait to read it. I'll probably do a video review. And the last of the review copies is this, the newest book in the Reading the City or A City in Short Fiction collection from Comma Press. This is the Book of Beijing. It's a collection of short stories from 10 Chinese authors who've all written about the city of Beijing. This is a kind of anthology that takes a lot of work to pull off. You've got 10 different stories, 10 different authors, a bunch of different translators, an editor and a publisher all working together Together to bring us a book that tries to encapsulate a city through its fiction. Comma Press have put out loads of these. They've done various cities around the UK, and they've also done cities from all around the world. I've read The Book of Shanghai, The Book of Tehran, the Book of Cairo, The Book of Jakarta, The Book of Tokyo. I think that was their first one. There are loads at this point, and this is their newest one, The Book of Beijing. I actually think it might have come out in August, I'm not sure, but I haven't gotten to it yet, and I'm excited to. Kitty mug. Okay, so those are all the review copies. Those are all things that I have been sent and I'm very excited to check out, talk about, maybe do a video about. Everything else is stuff that I've bought, stuff that I am excited to read. Some of these are new books, some of them are not. But when I look to my TBR, these are the six books that I've gotten recently that I'm most excited to talk about, most excited to just read, and three of them are really, really gorgeous hardcovers. I have not made it a secret that I've never read Anne Bronte. I've talked about Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte a whole bunch. It's one of my favorite novels. I'd probably call it my second favorite classic after Frankenstein. I also love Jane Eyre. Most people love Jane Eyre. I've never read anything by Anne Bronte. And that's quite often the case. She is probably the least well-known of the Bronte sisters. And yet when you admit this to people, it's surprising how often people say that she's their favorite. She's the underdog. And yet I keep bumping into people who love her above the other two. So I'm 
I'm finally gonna read The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. I went on a big meetup with a bunch of amazing booktubers a few weekends ago. We went on a tour around great bookshops of central London and got pizza together. There were 27 of us, and I got to meet and befriend so many lovely people. And when I admitted that I'd never read Anne Bronte, I was more or less forced to buy this from a bookshop, and I did, and I'm gonna read it. So if any of you are watching this, I'm getting to it. That book is surprisingly heavy though. People swear by Christina Henry, and I've never actually read any of her books. Most of them are inspired by fairy tales or are just kind of accessible horror novels. And this is Horseman, a retelling of the legend of Sleepy Hollow. I've thought about reading her for quite a while now. I've had my eye on a few of her books. And the reason I got this is because I was browsing Gaze the Word, one of the bookshops in central London that we visited. I've gone to Gaze the Word a thousand times, but I was looking at the transgender section, unsurprisingly, and I saw this there. And I thought, I'm sure Christina Henry's not trans. So what about this book is trans? And someone explained to me that the protagonist is a trans man. And that's what pushed me over the edge. The idea of dark and gothic retellings of fairy tales and folk tales and general horror, yeah, that's all definitely my thing. I love the works of T. Kingfisher, but this has a trans man in it. So this is the one I've picked. This is the one I'm starting with and I really hope I read it this month. Speaking of transgender stuff, a few months ago, I joined an all trans and non-binary D&D group. And through that group, I've made two new amazing friends. One of those friends, Cam, hi Cam, he's not watching this, <laughs> is a trans guy from Nashville, Tennessee. And he handed me this. This is Celestial Bodies, a year of transgender love letters. This is a small collection of transgender poetry by Carson Elliott, a friend of Cam's. And I'm really excited to read it. I actually read one of them and it was stunning. This is a really cool and unique thing. I don't know anything about Carson Elliott, but I'm about to learn a lot about their love life. And I think that's beautiful. Now on to the final three, three big massive hardbacks. I love the works of Jennifer Saint. I have talked about every book she's written so far somewhere on my channel. And when Atalanta was announced, it was definitely the one I was most excited about. And I still haven't read it. This book came out in April. I still haven't read it. Jennifer Saint is amazing. I love her Greek mythology retellings. I've loved each one more than the last. And I was so excited to read this and I haven't read it. What is wrong with me? I have a plan to make a video about the recent Greek mythology retellings that I've been reading, but in order to have enough to talk about for that video, I need to read Atalanta and I still haven't done it. This book is about the one female Argonaut, the woman who killed the Caledonian boar. She's a legend of Greek mythology. And this is a novel about her by an author that I really cherish and I haven't read it yet. This month I need to fix that. This is a new book that came out recently. I saw it in a bookshop. Actually, I saw it in multiple bookshops multiple times and I kept looking at it and going, wow, this looks fine. <laughs> But Marlon James loved it? Reviews online are insanely positive. People have gone nuts over this book. But when I read the blurb, I thought, yeah, this sounds okay. Ink Blood Sister Scribe, not a very catchy name, kind of goofy, kind of silly. This edition has sprayed edges, which a lot of people get excited about, but I don't care. Sprayed edges are nice, but it's kind of superficial. It's not a reason to read a book. But I couldn't get away from all this positive press. Everyone loves this book, and the fact that Marlon James likes it, that says a lot. It's also a book about magic books, and I don't know, I have so many reasons to think that I won't enjoy this, but I had to get it eventually. I just couldn't put it off. I knew that I eventually would, so I took the plunge. I'm going to read it. I am excited, but only to a point. I'm a bit nervous. Let's see if it's good. And finally, there's this massive, beautiful, gorgeous boy, The Square of Sevens. This is by Laura Shepard Robinson. She wrote Blood and Sugar and Daughters of Night. Both are historical crime novels that I have been really, really tempted to buy and read for quite a while now, every time I see those two books in a shop or in a library, I think, yeah, 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 I need to get and read those books. And over and over again, I just haven't. But then this came out. This is also an historical mystery novel and it's about fortune telling. And fairly recently, I kind of semi got into tarot cards. So this is what pushed me over the edge. It feels like this might have a slight Laura Purcell element to it. It feels like something Laura Purcell might write and I love her so much. From the reviews I've seen, from the press it's been getting, it seems like this is now her best book. That's kind of the consensus. So probably the best place to start reading her. So here we go, The Square of Sevens, the biggest, heftiest book I'm probably gonna read in September. There you go. That was 10 books that I'm hopefully gonna read in September. I'm very, very excited. Let's see how well I stick to this. <laughs> I am nervous, genuinely. 
It's pretty low stakes, but putting it out on a video makes it feel more important than it really is. So we'll see. Anyway, if you enjoyed this, I have a Patreon. You can support me on Patreon. I would love your support. My patrons are the coolest people. They're really, really great intersectional bookworms. So if you want to be part of my Patreon, you can. And subscribe for books.